Welcome back everybody to another <laughs> grim camping with Tony and Bruce. Bruce, come here. Come and say hello to everybody. Come on. Oh, it's grim, isn't it? But you're having fun. You're going nuts. Uh, the rain is coming down. Let's see, I've been walking two hours, just to, almost two and a quarter hours. Gained 700 meters. So we're, we're, we're just over a thousand meters right now. I think we're at 1200 meters. Um, yeah, we're on the tops. My favorite place where the weather can really get you. And boy, has this been a hard walk up. It's not that cold. It's about 10 degrees centigrade, uh, but the wind is making it a lot cooler. I need to get this massive pack off. I've got a 110 liter pack on. And people might say, why have you got such a massive pack with so much gear? Because I enjoy it. It's good for training. And it's good to have all the creature comforts and just seeing how much gear I can carry. It's a challenge. I love the challenge. All right, so, yep, we're in top of the South Island of New Zealand. It's the beginning of spring, believe it or not. It's four seasons in one day in New Zealand. Uh, spring here starts uh, in, um, where are we now? We're in November. It starts in October. It's right, Southern Hemisphere is opposite to the Northern Hemisphere. I seem to have to explain that every single time. All right, it's pretty grim. The rain has started bucking down, so I'll bring you back when I'm setting up camp. Catch you in a bit. Welcome back everybody. Okay, I'm at camp. Um, it's got grim. It's actually pretty cold. I'm drenched through. Can't talk properly. This always happens when I come up here. Um, I've got a poncho, uh, but that's covering my pack at the moment. So what I need to do is just get the tarp up really quickly. Uh, just so I've got some shelter and sort myself out. The plan is I'm gonna set the tent up here. Um, it's got two doors. Face out that way. Hey, Brucey. Um, and then, but I'm going to set the tarp up above me here, so I need to get on with that now. Uh, Bruce wants his treat, but I've got to get the uh, tarp set up first, and then he can have his treat. Even though I've said it now, and now he wants it. <laughs> Brucey. But I need to get I need to get uh, shelter up first because I need to get into dry clothes, and the food is all buried at the bottom of the pack, and I don't want to get it all wet, any wetter than it has to get. So I'm going to keep it covered with the poncho. All right, let's get the tarp up. He's going to think that there's T R E A T is in here. Okay, so I've got a three by three meter tarp with me this time, I think. Or did I bring a four by three? I can't remember. Let's have a look. That's three by three meter. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a pretty typical square tarp over the top. And the wind is going to be quite strong, so it does need to be pretty secure. I could do a plow point, but I'm not a huge fan of plow points. Okay, so use my pre-made cord, my carabiners to make it easy. That was a brutal slog. So that is three hours. That took just under three hours. 
that was quite a hike. Now I'll adjust, adjust the height of it and everything afterwards, but I just want to get some shelter up first. Just to get out of this rain. See, it's quite a breeze. And it's coming swirling from over here. I'm gonna set this up quite high so I don't have to bend down too far. Put the tent up. Hopefully I won't need to use any pegs. It's a nice little spot here. Okay, it's getting colder. Ah, oh, that feels good just even standing under this a little bit. Okay, I just need to tie off this and we're almost there. Then I can relax a bit, take my time and I can put warm clothes, warm dry clothes on. Oh, greasy. I don't know if you can see Bruce, but he's going nuts on the stick here. Okay, we are getting there. Oh. Oh, that's nice. The ground is soaked. It's just saturated everywhere around here. Okay, I need to get the other end done up. I know, Bruce, you're going to get your treat in a second. I'm desperate, I know. Oh, we're so close. Woo, it's getting chilly. It's getting cold. Oh yes, that is looking good. That's a great shelter. Oh, undercover finally. Okay, let me. Oh, 
man. I think what I need to do is get my dry clothes on, then do the tent. So I'm gonna change. So he's making a little bed for himself. This is what he does, he does this at home. Digs away, makes a nice, dry, warm bed, and then he'll just lie there and wait. He loves it. Even if I put a bed out, a proper bed out for him, that's what he does. Okay, I'm gonna change and I'll bring you straight back. Okay, so, whew, that was, that was cold, taking absolutely everything off and putting warm gear on, but now I feel great. Um, once you're dry, it's not that cold. As I said, it's about 10 degrees centigrade, but the wind chill is taking it closer to zero centigrade. Um, but I've got two layers on. I've got a merino layer on under here, I've got a shirt. I've got an 800 loft jo jacket in here that I'm gonna put on uh, once I put the tent up, I've got my chair out. Brucey wants his treat, so let's give Brucey his treat. He's been very patiently waiting. All right, Brucey, you gonna show everyone how good you are. Let's see if he'll do a sit pretty. Sit pretty? Can you sit pretty? Come on, sit pretty. Oh, good boy, beautiful. He doesn't like being watched, but he is just there. I don't know if you can see him. Can you see him down there? I know a lot of people want to see him when I'm doing these things, so let me just turn it. Hold on. There. <laughs> but now you might not be able to see me set the tent up, but anyway. Right, so I've got with me the Hilleberg Rogan. And I'm glad I've got a footprint on it because this ground is just saturated. So what I'm probably going to do, it's got two doors, but I, I think I'm going to sit facing the camera that way. Um, so I'll, I'll set it up lengthways here. Now, beauty of the uh, Hilberg tents that they come all attached, the inner and the outer. So you don't have to faff around as much. So yeah, I've got a, a ground sheet attached as well. I mean, the Hilleberg tents, you don't really need to do that. You don't really need to have a separate ground sheet. The inner ground sheet is so good anyway. But it's just to give you a bit more protection. Okay. Oh, I've only just made this tarp high enough so that in the middle I can stand up. Bruce is pulling on a hell of a face eating that thing, I'm telling you. So I've only used this tent once before and I really liked it, so fingers crossed it does well this time as well. It's a three season tent. It is not, technically it's not a four season tent. So it's not designed to take snow loading and there won't be any snow here this time. But we have got a lot of rain forecast. So I really wanted to get this camp set up before the heavy stuff kicked in.
close enough. Right. Come on. Okay. I think if you just put a couple of pegs in, it is a little bit easier. But that was fine. Okay, and one more thing to go in is the center pole. Let me just move you around a bit so you can see what I'm doing here. You can still see Luke Bruce's face. So a center pole for the vestibule here, it just slots in from the other side. I don't want to stand in the rain. Bring it forward a bit. And you'll see it pop out the other end there towards you. There you go. Sorted. Right. Now I just need to peg the doors out. So it is uh, it is sort of it is freestanding, but it's not completely self-supporting. So to have the vestibules out, you do need to peg them out. Whereas if you look on the Staker tent that I've got, or the Una, you don't need to use any pegs at all. Myself loads of room out front and just have the top covering here. That'll do. Okay, so peg out the corners. We are on the tops, so you should peg it out really. Because the winds up here can get pretty bad. You see Bruce has finished his treat already. We're done. That's how quick the Rogan is to set up. That's not bad at all, I tell you. In terms of how long tents take to set up, that was genuinely quick. Right. chair up so I can sit down and chill out. That has to be the quickest I've ever set up a tarp and tent. Okay, we're good. So I'll leave one peg out to do the door with later uh, when I go to bed. So I'll just double peg there. But other than that, we're done.
Everything is drenched. My wet clothes. I mean, could hang them out, but they're not gonna dry. <laughs> it's just sopping, everything is sopping. And it's only gonna get worse. So I'm just gonna hang them. If I can. Oh, okay. So chair next. Let me just move you back a bit. Sorry, Brucey. And we might even be able to get Bruce to come and sit with us, you never know. Okay, he's got one more treat left. Oh, you've had your treat, Bruce. What I do need to do is go and get water. So I can get him some water in his bowl. Although there are puddles absolutely everywhere. No, Bruce, you've had your treat. Nice try. His food, my food. Yeah. This is my down jacket. Once I sit down, I'll need to put that on. Towel. Okay, well my transier, my cooking gear. I have got it all with me this time. I'm going comfort. My sleeping bag. That miniature table. Oh, my chair. Let's do the chair now. Oh look, it's soaked. That has come in through the bottom of the pack because I lay the pack down on the ground and it just soaked up through the pack. I'm using a different pack this time. It's MFH. I don't know who they are. Some military stuff. But usually I use my Tatonka. I'll be honest, the quality of this is not very good. The Tatonka quality is vastly superior. So my chair has got a bit damp. At least my, my sleeping bag didn't get wet. That would have been a nightmare. Actually, I better pull out everything just in case there's anything else in there that now will get wet. My pillow's dry. Bruce's bed, his blanket, it's dry. My sleep pad, everything else is dry. But it is wet in the bottom of the pack where I lay it on the ground. So the Tatonka is way more water resistant than this thing, this MFH thing. Check out my chair. Ah, oh, this is gonna be luxury. Ah. <laughs> oh. Oh, Brucey, you're soaked. Come over here. If you're going to stay here, I'll have to dry you off, but you won't, so... So I'm not going to put his bed out when he's soaking wet. And he's still, he'll still want to go and play. Also, we've got to go and get water. So, um... Let me set my table up. No more treats, Bruce. No. Go and play. Go on. He's only loitering because he thinks there's something else. Or he's trying to get something else. He knows the routine, he knows there's nothing else. My little click clack table. Where am I going? Yeah.
Okay. I am, I tell you what, desperate for a coffee. So I need to go and get water. What else have I got here? Mainly uh, camera gear. <laughs> oh, I've got my change of socks and everything. But yeah, a lot of camera gear. Microphone stuff. Got my first aid kit, my ouch pouch. Let's take that out. Yep, my first aid kit in a waterproof pack. Oh, I do carry a lot of stuff. I've got a GoPro for more filming. Another water bottle. A little treat for extra tonight. That's about it. Lanterns and stuff like that. Fuel for the Tranja. And yeah, headlamp. Lamps to hang up, which I will do later. Okay. So I could put the pack under the other vestibule which I might do but I'll just leave it here for now on my poncho the poncho is really handy because the poncho is 100% waterproof you can just spread it out it covers a big area I did have it over my pack as well when I was walking up here hello Brucey I know let's go and get Bruce some water thank you Bruce for the kiss it's 3 p.m. Um, that was a big walk up so while there's a lull in the rain, uh, what you can hear now is just falling off the tree. So while there's a lull, let's go and get some water from the tarn. Come on then, Bruce, let's go and get the water. All right, so we're gonna go to the tarn. Let me show you where it is. Some of you might recognize the spot. I have camped in the snow here on a couple of occasions. And I've camped right here. So not far away at all. I've had the tent up there and I've sort of sat here uh, in this little clearing. But whilst that's great for the snow, that it's not good for wind. It is a really windy spot. Okay, to the tarn. the calm before the storm. Okay, the tarn's just over there. Let's get over there. Nice mountain tarn. Beautiful fresh water. Nice and clear. Yeah, I think I had an energy drink in there before. So I'll just rinse that out once. Yeah. got water. Let's get back before it starts chucking with rain. Bruce, 
Come on. Let's go, go, go. Oh no, he's gone right through it. <laughs> Brucey, why did you come through the tarn? Come on, let's go back to camp. Oh man. Well, he was soaked anyway, but now he's really soaked. He loves water. He's a water dog. Uh, when we're up here in the summer, he jumps in those tarns and he has great swims. Wow, it is really wet. Yuck. <laughs> yeah, so the tarn, as you can see, is just there. Oh, what a beautiful spot. Now, hopefully the forecast is, yes, lots of rain tonight, this evening. Um, but tomorrow is gonna to be much nicer. Which is a good thing. Because it'd be nice if it was sunny tomorrow. That was a brutal climb up, I have to say. So I think I clocked my pack at 22 kilos. Oh, look, here's the rain. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. We need to get into camp. Oh yeah, okay, I think, I think it's coffee time, Bruce. Coffee time. Okay, Bruce, you can lie down. Come on. You can lie down on my poncho. Not that he will. No, Bruce, there's no, no more treats. No, it's not dinner time yet either. I don't know what you're doing. Nope. I don't want him shaking next to me. Getting everything absolutely drenched. Go on, Bruce, go and play. I just know him. He he'll go and play, he'll go and find a stick, he'll mess around. Oof, what do I need? You know what I need to do is I need to put my uh, down jacket on. I'm feeling quite chilly now. So I've got a new one. Now, I bought this online, and the company only sells overseas online, I think. I, I can't remember if they had a store or not. I think they're in Sweden. I think they're Swedish. Oh, I can't remember. Swedish or Norwegian. I think they're Swedish. It's called Stella. Stella Equipment. And this is an 800 loft. I think it's, no Bruce, no, I don't want to get wet. I think it's, good boy. You see, if I dried him and put his bed out, it would be soaking wet for dinner. And as soon as he has that, he's gonna go nuts. So I'm gonna pour him some water, even though he's just had a whole load of water in the tarn. Got water, Bruce? Yeah, anyway, I can't remember. It's a warm jacket. <laughs> Stellar equipment. They're expensive, but I like it so far. I got just slightly oversized because I hate being constricted. Um, but it's comfy, it's warm very warm I mean I am instantly wow it's like it's, it's like putting on a furnace instantly cooking right let's get the whole cooking stuff set up
So if you've never heard of it before, this is called a Tranja. It's an alcohol stove. It's windproof, it's stable. It comes with all sorts of attachments. You can get all sorts of pots for it and everything else. I'm going pretty lightweight with it today. I've just got a pan, I've got my kettle, the Tranja kettle. And it has the alcohol burner. This little thing. Uh, hands are cold. There you go. And I use methylated spirits. And it comes with a little uh, deflector. Sorry, not deflector. Uh, reducer. So you can you got you put it out with this, and you turn it down, turn down the flame with that as well. Matches are usually the best thing to use because you can just throw them in there. Failing that, use a lighter. I'm all for the big lighters. There you go. It's amazing how much water you get through in camp. You're making all these hot drinks and stuff. And if you're using rehydrated meals, be aware that you really get through it. Got my little cooler here. Just all my food in there. And Grab a coffee, hazelnut latte. Okay. Ah, oh, I feel warm. Happy to be here. You know, every time when I start, when I get to the bottom, driving to this these tops here and I know what a slog it is I know how painful it's gonna be I just I just know how hard it is to get up here I dread it I'm at the bottom I'm like oh can I be bothered every time oh, I've cut myself I thought I did um, yeah every time and I just persevere and I just I just suck it up So talking of cutting yourself, if I did cut myself seriously in my medical kit, it's not just a medical kit, it, it contains a lot of other things in there as well. And it is waterproof. I've got matches, painkillers, I've even got an emergency dental kit. I don't know if you've ever seen these things, but for first aid, if you crack your tooth or a filling comes out, this would be a lifesaver. It fixes it and numbs it gives you time to get to where you need to get to. Um, I might take some ibuprofen because my back is killing me. Yeah, I've got all sorts in here. Um, I've also got um, a special blood clot stuff, wound gel it's called. And you just put that on if it's really hemorrhaging blood and it will seal it up. I've got emergency matches, waterproof matches, emergency duct tape, bellows, fire lighter, not that I'm going to have a fire up here this time. It's just not worth it. It's not 
A, it's so wet. Everything around here is soaked. Um, so finding dry firewood here is almost impossible. Um, but yeah, I just it's just not cold enough to justify it. And if it's going to be really, really windy, I don't want to have a fire. Okay. All right, I'm waiting for this to bloom and boil, so I'll bring you back when the coffee's ready. Okay, we're boiling. So I've got a tiny bit of signal up here. So I just messaged, uh, managed to message Anne and say everything's all right. We're up the tops, all good. I'm just having coffee. Ah, uh, <laughs> honestly, I just, I feel so refreshed and reinvigorated when I'm back up here. Looking at the woods. It's epic. Absolutely epic. The only thing I hate, and anyone who watches my channel knows this, is the wind. I hate the wind. This jacket, by the way, is great. So it has really long tail at the back, if you can see that. So as long as you sit down on it properly, it then stays just like that, perfectly. Now Bruce is socking wet, he's so wet. But he's not going fetal, so he's actually closing his eyes, he's, he's tired. I have to keep an eye on him, if I feel he does, like he, if he starts to shiver or if he goes fetal, then I'll dry him and put him on his bed and put a blanket on him. But I don't want to do that unless he shows me that something's not right and that he's cold. Then right now he's not, I can see it. And I can see his undercoat is bone dry. He's just tired and he's just having a snooze. So, yeah, I keep an eye on him all the time. I watch for any signs. Because I don't want to get all of his bedding wet, soaking wet straight away. Um, because I want him to dry off at night when it's time to go to bed. So then I dry him off completely. Then he goes on a nice dry bed. Uh, it will soak up any of that moisture and the blanket and he'll be toasty warm. Not that he'll feel it anyway. It's As I say, it's, it's whatever it is. I've got a thermometer out actually. It's 10 degrees centigrade. What is that, 50? Don't know, I think that's 50. But it's 10 degrees centigrade. That's, for him, that's... <laughs> no, he'll go down to minus 10 before he starts feeling slightly chilly. Um, for me, the reason I got cold is I just got wet. Got soaked coming up. There's no way to avoid it. Even if you wear a rain jacket, I'm soaked with sweat. Just drenched through with sweat. Um, because it is such a steep climb. I've put a plaster on, as you can see. It's such a steep climb. I'm carrying so much gear. It's impossible not to be drenched. And yeah, it would be futile to, to come up here and be bone dry. As long as you've got your dry clothes to change into as soon as possible, then everything's good. As you saw, I got this. I mean, I had the tarp set up in what? A couple of minutes? Didn't take long. I could have probably gone quicker. But this is how you do it. If you're curious how you go camping when it's raining and stay comfy and warm, this is how you do it. You don't need a fire. You just gotta have the right gear. Um, these pants are a thick fleece and water resistant, but they're warm, really warm. I've got the merino layer on, I've got my 800 loft jacket. I've also got a blanket that covers both myself and Bruce. If I had to, I'd drape it over him. So if he got cold, I would make him come and lie next to me. 
on the poncho and I would put the blanket on him. But he's fast asleep, doesn't care. He's had a great time. You know, three hours from here is hard slog. Three hours from him coming up here is just so much fun. He was chasing all sorts, you know, scents, smells. He could hear the birds, the um, kia. It's like a mountain parrot. Oh, he runs all over the place. So he's probably done twice the distance I have, which is why he's worn himself out and he's fast asleep now. Camp, so what do I think of camp? Um, just absolutely awesome. I like the way that, I know that the wind is blowing from behind, but I can hunker down with the tent behind me. It's blocking out all the wind. No rain is gonna to get to me under here at all. If it was that misty fine stuff, then I would lower the, the tarp right down. But the tarp right now is set up just over six foot at the top. Um, I think tonight when I go to sleep, I would probably tighten the whole thing up just so I don't get any pooling. But it's a great tarp, this Flames Creed tarp. It's DWR treated, the water just beads off it, no problem. And I know we do have a lot of rain coming. It could be anything up to 50, 60 mil in quite a short period of time. And when we got here, there was a massive puddle right here, uh, which is gone. So that shows that it's drying out with the tarp here as well. Also, it's just stopped raining really. It's just a bit of drizzle. All right, everyone, I'm gonna have my coffee. I'm gonna have some ibuprofen, vitamin I. Oh, that's nice. Hazelnut latte, yum. That's my ibuprofen. Yeah, if you know me, then you know my back is, I've got an uh, old injury. And I just have to keep training to um, keep it supple. And carrying these massive packs <laughs> doesn't help at all. And I always feel it. It twinged slightly coming up. Let's hope it doesn't go while I'm up here. I have my coffee, I'm gonna chill out and I'll probably bring you back for dinner because I feel like an early dinner tonight and early to bed because I'm exhausted. That was such a hard slog. I don't know how many, um... now, just to give you an idea, how many calories you burn on something like that. Let me tell you, because I, I had my Apple Watch Ultra on and it talks to my phone. Here we go, so that was 8.4 kilometers. A total of 1,727 calories today. But that was 1,382. I gained 825 meters and it was three hours. Pretty exhausting. I'll take a picture of this so you can, uh... <laughs> I'll take a screenshot so you can see it and I'll, I'll put it on the screen somewhere here, probably. Uh, and then you can see what I'm talking about. Um, and then if I go to my hiking app just to find out where I am, we're at 1,300 meters. Yeah, I'll put on there what that is in feet. But yeah, 1,300 meters. Cool. I have deserved a great dinner and I've deserved everything else that I've got. Okay, everyone, I'll bring you back for dinner time. And thanks again for coming. Much appreciated. Mm.
Welcome back, everybody. Uh, it's that time. I think it's it's time for dinner. And um, Bruce is definitely ready for his dinner. Aren't you, Brucey? So we've just been chilling. I was watching a movie. Bruce has been playing. <laughs> I've had to call him back a few times as he's disappeared a long way away. Oh, right, let's get Brucey his dinner. So Bruce has a combination of Hills Science Diet, high protein food, dry food, and an organic wet food. The, this one is salmon, made in New Zealand. absolutely loves it it is <laughs> I mean he wolfs this down because we had such a long walk I'm gonna give him a double helping of this stuff and I always bring enough food for an extra day for him just in case Isn't that right, Brucey? It's been on and off like this, the rain. But the heaviest was meant to be sort of coming later this evening. So you never know, it might absolutely chuck down. Okay. That is a lot of food. <laughs> That's really heavy. There you go, Brucey. Good boy. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's light the transit and get my dinner done as well. So for my dinner tonight, I am having beef schnitzel. So the advantage of some of these things that are already prepared, I mean, I just stopped off in the supermarket on the way here, is that there's very little prep required. That suits me. Oh, and I've switched to the uh, microphone, the wireless mic. I'm, I'm trying this uh, new DJI mic see how that goes because I've been having all sorts of problem with the road wireless go to it just just keeps uh, crapping out on me causing all sorts of issues interference and everything so I'm hoping this one's better I'm also hoping it's picking up the rain of this that the sound of this rain I guess I won't be able to find out till I get home can you see him I can't tell if you can see him yep you can let me just tilt this down a bit. You're getting an awful lot of sky here. Let me just adjust this, hold on. Okay. It's always complicated filming in these conditions because it is windy. Um, the wind isn't getting in here. So what I've done is, you'll probably notice I've lowered the tarp just at the back and I've raised it at the front. So now I'm not feeling any wind in this spot at all. So as you can see, probably by the lamps and the tarp, it is blowing. And it, it's blowing quite hard, to be honest, it's blowing quite hard. But now what's happening, because I've put the tarp down over the back of the tent, the wind is blowing over the top as opposed to under the tarp and hitting me. 
So I'm actually much warmer now. I'm not feeling any wind at all, which is a good thing. Okay, so dinner. Right. Okay, so we got our crumbed beef schnitzel crumbed. And I've got some garlic butter to have. Oh, Brucey, what's going on here? There you go. Sorry. Didn't notice that that was moving all the way over here. Poor thing, he's trying to get to it and it's slip sliding all over the place. These bowls don't stay put. Okay, so let's. Ooh, it's the first time I've been able to see my breath. Now I do have a thermometer here. Let's see what the temperature is now. It's probably the same, but. Oh no, it's dropped. Okay, it's eight degrees now. I'll tell you what, let's put the thermometer somewhere it's easier to see. So eight degrees centigrade. Sorry, Brucey. I'm getting you all tangled up here, aren't I? There you go. Alright, let's clip this onto the tent. Mini thermometers, they're great. Okay, so I've got some uh, New Zealand garlic and sea salt butter. To cook this in. I figured rather than bringing seasoning, cook it in seasoning. <laughs> it's probably going to caramelize a bit, but this pan doesn't get overly hot, so I hope it will be okay. You all right there, Brucey? There you go. <laughs> I hope the camera's picking that up. That's because I've just lit this. And now you're seeing how cold the temperature is. It's chilly. It's chilly without a fire. But as I said, it's just, I can't be bothered. It's so windy that it's just not worth it with the fire. Smoke drives me absolutely crazy. Smoke and wind. Ugh. Okay, now let's try and do this without dropping this on the floor. There we go. Right. And this other one, so there's two in the packet. The other one is a spare. That's my backup day, just in case. Always carry a backup day of food. You just never know. And a few times now, I'm very glad that I had carried one because just got stranded, couldn't get out, weather, whatever, or just decided that I wanted to stay another night. And it just gives you options because you've got that extra food. And I've got an Asia, uh, sorry, Southwest chopped kit. It's like a coleslaw salad and stuff like that. It's the right combination. So let's mix that all up. No, Bruce, no. You've had your dinner now. That's enough. Go on, away. Got to be firm, because otherwise they'll run amok. Border Collies. Nothing worse than a dog that begs. So this beef schnitzel shouldn't take too long. So these chopped kits are fantastic, they really are. Got everything you need in them. I don't know what dressing. Creamy coriander dressing, okay? And it comes with a bunch of seeds or whatever. I think, yep, something like that. Crunchy bits, 
add all the crunchy bits in. These are from Taylor Farms, wherever that is. Somewhere in New Zealand. Add your coriander dressing. Mm -mm. Oh, I'm getting all sorts of smells off this schnitzel. The garlic smells amazing. This is going to be so good. <laughs> I'm so ready for this. The little cool bag's pretty cool. From Sistema. I've never bought one of those small ones up here before, but yeah, it's quite handy. Mix that all in. Oh man, I, I am ready for this. Now you'll notice I didn't bring any beers with me this time. I couldn't bear the thought of lugging all that weight up, honestly. Okay, let's put half of that on. I love my beers, but it's so difficult coming up this mountain. I just thought I'd give myself a rest from it. Okay, salad's done. I mean, how easy is that? All right, let's try and do this again without knocking on the floor. Oh yeah, crispy. Looking good. And what I might do is just try and chop this in half. It's a nice thin cut, this, so it cooks really easily. I mean, all, all schnitzels are anyway, but here we go. Oh, you know what? That's crying out for a bit more butter. So you see, it's really windy out there. If you can see the tart moving, and I'm just not getting it here at all. It's brilliant. It's a great setup. A good meal. You know what? I think that's dumb. I think we're good. It honestly doesn't take very long. Oh, the garlic smells brilliant. If you know, you've got to pour it all. Get all the crispy bits. Do not knock it on the floor. Awesome. And 
here we have beef schnitzel with southern chopped salad. Oh boy, let's tuck in. Bon appetit, everybody. <laughs> I didn't bring my big knife because I thought, oh, I won't need it. I'm not having a fire. I've got a little knife, but I don't want to use that for meat. Oh, this works. Okay, I have a knife. See, I get there in the end. <laughs> I always get there in the end. Could this be the start of the heavy rain they were talking about? Maybe. Okay, let's try that again. Bon appetit, everybody. Hmm. Yeah. That was a good choice. Wow. Bruce is just lying out in the rain. You can't see him. I put my poncho down here and told him to come and lie on it. The second I turned away, he walked off again out there to play. He's waiting for it to go dark. So I put his light on and he can go nuts. Flavors are amazing. You can really taste that garlic butter. It's very nice.
Mm-mm-mm. Wow. Honestly, I couldn't talk because it was just so delicious. Wow, that was so nice. I think I need to finish that off with a hot chocolate. So let's get a hot chocolate on. Brucey. Welcome back, everybody. Bruce, um was lying here until I got up to do the camera and then he's like, nope, that's it. I've had enough lying here. And now he's gone and lay in the rain. Can you see him? I think you can. Oh, he's playing with the shadows. What can you do? There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> it's what he lives for. All right, cigar time. I wonder if I could lure him here with a treat. A treat. Does Bruce want a treat? Oh, maybe I can lure him here with a treat. Hang on. But it's it's a question of getting him to stay. That's that's the hard thing because he. Oh. <laughs> okay, come over here. All right. Down, right down, right down. Here you go. Uh, no, 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 right down. You've got to stay here and have it. Right down. Here you go. Stay there, Bruce. No, lie down. Good boy. Look, I don't know if he'll stay there. I start yapping and he kind of walks off. It's just what he does. So, cigar time. So we've got a uh, Romeo and Julieta Cazadores. This should be good. I'm so full from dinner. And then I had a salted caramel hot chocolate, which was epic. And now I'm piping hot, even though it's freezing cold. <laughs> it's quite difficult lighting a cigar properly with a Bic lighter, but I didn't bring my jet lighter up with me. It's funny, depending on the cigar bar that you go to, they all use different methods to light cigars. Some prefer matches. Some prefer jet lighters, some prefer Bic type lighters. No rhyme, no reason. I do have my own treat though. I said I didn't bring any beer, but I've still got the whiskey that Corey at Sea West Camping got me. Cheers, Corey. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's been a while. Oh, my. That is lovely. I've got it in this really ultra lightweight titanium hip flask that I got off Amazon. Bountiful Voyage, I think it's called, something like that, something bizarre. But that's quite handy as well. Mmm, so, cigar time. There's a lot going on. And I have some massive news at the end of this video. Well, at the end of cigar time anyway. Huge news.
So you're going to want to stick around for that to hear what that news is. Feel free to comment if you've got a guess as to what you think the news is. I think there might be one person, one person in the comment section that might actually work it out who had made a comment and I responded. Funny you should mention that. So someone might figure it out. So cigar chat, what do we got to talk about? Let me check my notes. Um, okay, first of all, what I want to do is thank everybody that's bought us treats. Uh, bought Bruce treats, bought me treats, on buy me a coffee. Uh, that have bought merch, um, that have uh, subscribed as, as members on the channel. It's all amazing. Patreon, all you got, just fantastic. Thank you so much to everyone. Um, it, it's just it's just quite rewarding that you feel that it's worth contributing to the channel. And uh, as I said, and I've said many times before. All the money goes straight back into the channel on equipment. Um, it, this, this stuff is super expensive that I buy and it's all used for that, for me to try it all out. Uh, for camera equipment, I carry state-of-the-art gear and um, to make videos that are, at the end of the day, free to everybody. So um, even though you get the occasional comment that complains that they don't like what they see or they don't like sponsorships, things like that, those things help pay for me to do this because you don't have to pay. You don't have to buy a ticket to come and see this. And you can get to see it as many times as you want. It costs you nothing at all. So any contribution is much appreciated. Thank you so much. I really do mean it. And Bruce loves all the treats he gets and I love all the treats. And I get to put it all to good use to all of this equipment. So you can see what equipment is good and what's not good. So thank you again. In fact, I think that all you guys Guys and girls that have contributed financially to the channel, I think you all deserve a toast. Cheers. Okay, so what's been going on? Well, a few things. First of all, sports. Formula One, Red Bull has basically got away with it scot-free with cheating in Formula One. They've been given a fine, which is nothing. They've been given a 10% reduction in wind tunnel testing which makes no difference because they got the fastest car already. So it's not going to affect them. It's a total joke. Formula One now is a farce. It's an absolute joke. It's been ruined by wokeness. Um, it's been ruined by safety that's just gone in completely the wrong direction. Uh, it's been ruined by crap cars that sound rubbish and by drivers that are now robots and don't speak their minds. There you go. Everybody always misses the old days and everybody thinks that their days were better, but I'm telling you, the racing was better. The sound of the cars was better during Senna. The drivers were more fun to watch. They took risks. They took each other out. Uh, at Formula One is just, it's almost, it's almost dead to me. It's, I'm just so bored of it. I really am bored of it. And I know they're trying to secure a new type of audience uh, by using Netflix. Fine, if that's the kind of audience you want, knock yourself out, go for it. But I just, I just don't have any pleasure anymore. It is, it's just not racing anymore to me. It's, it's, it's just entertainment, which is different. And I, I don't care about it. Uh, the final sports thing was, uh, it's confirmed that Tom Brady has, uh, and Giselle are definitely divorcing. And the Bucks have just, I think, in fact, for Brady, this is the first time he's ever lost three in a row. Is it affecting his game? Is the GOAT going to flop? Who knows? But I'm quite shocked. It, does it turn out that the GOAT was only the GOAT because of Gronsky and others? I don't know. But that team, the Bucks, do not look good. They look rubbish. That's enough of sport. Bit of politics. I haven't done politics for a long time. And everybody's politics are different. 
and uh, I believe in free speech and I believe in freedom of thought and I don't believe in cancelling just because you don't agree with that person. So I believe that we should be able to talk about politics. We used to be able to talk about politics and then it all got really hostile in the last few years and you either, you're either with someone or you're their enemy. It's crazy. Just, the world has become so binary, which is ironic because some people are trying to make the world non-binary. Go figure. Isn't it a joke that people are claiming to be non-binary and if you kind of disagree with it, you're cancelled because of them being binary. Because <laughs> it's either yes or no. Isn't it a joke? There's no middle ground anymore. There's no freedom of thought. You're either with them or you're against them. It's absolutely crazy. doesn't matter what you believe in. The world has just gone to pot. It really has. Uh, anyway, Rishi Sunak is now the Prime Minister of the UK. And you know what? Oh, I liked Boris. I liked Brexit. I had my own reasons. But Boris blew it. Yeah. He, it wasn't that he was loyal to his, his team. It's that he just, he did not delegate wisely to the right people and he kept hold of people that were just rubbish and uh, abused the system. And Boris blew it. He absolutely blew it. This was all on Boris. It doesn't matter what anybody else did. They just didn't want to work for the guy anymore. So get over it. Boris screwed up. Yeah, he had a mandate. Yes, the people voted for him. Who else was there? He was the only one running. So Rishi is now Prime Minister. Liz Truss was a disaster. She was chosen by the party. Conservative Party, who I'm assuming the people that voted for uh, just voted against Rishi because they didn't like the fact that Rishi backstabbed Boris. I don't think Rishi backstabbed Boris at all. I think he was honest. I think he said, I'm sorry, this guy has no integrity whatsoever. Like zero. And I don't want to work for someone with no integrity. This is a joke. Why am I here? I'm here to serve. I'm, I'm here to serve people, and I'm working for a guy that's ripping the people off by day by day, and his mates are doing really well, and it's a complete joke. So look, get behind Rishi, because your alternative is Keir Starmer and Labour, and it will be a disaster. It will bankrupt the country. You think the country's bankrupt now? Oh my God. You should see New Zealand under a Labour government. They have bankrupt New Zealand. Jacinda Ardern has trashed the place. There's no money left. I don't know where they're going to get the money from. But taxpayers are going to be paying for this for years and years to come. And, that, you know, it doesn't matter about COVID. This was before COVID. They'd already destroyed it. So anyway, I'm glad that Rishi Sunak is there. I'm sure uh, some people won't be. And people will make comments that I must be insane. Just, look, we can agree to disagree. But no one needs to be hostile about it. I think the guy has integrity. Okay. Is he married to a super rich woman? Is he non-dom? Yeah, he's just doing what everybody else would do. He's doing what you would do if you had what he had. So people have got to stop virtue signaling, got to stop being holier than thou and get behind the prime minister so he can fix what's going on in the country. Give him a chance. I gave Liz Truss a chance and she blew it in the first three days. So give him a chance. You've always got to give leaders a chance. That's my view. Elon Musk now definitely owns Twitter and he sacked the top three. Thank God. Because that Twitter had become a joke. It had become a woke joke with its own police department that just decided whether they wanted to hear what you had to say or not. They cancelled so many people. And rightly or wrongly, You know, Elon Musk looked at this and just said, you know what? This platform should not be controlled by one side. It really shouldn't. It really shouldn't. It's not right. It's, it's not healthy. It's not healthy to just rubber stamp your opinion all the time. You've got to have debate. You have to have debate. Debate's what makes us more intelligent. Without debate, you're just going to become thick because you won't understand anything else. And then your country's enemies will come at you because that's what happens always. So I think Elon Musk buying it is a good thing. 
give him a chance. Let's see where it goes. I don't know who the CEO is going to be. And I don't care whether Trump goes back on it or not. Honestly, that's not what this is about. Um, it's just about Twitter is the most powerful voice in the world right now. And it shouldn't be controlled by one side or the other. It should be down the middle. Yeah. Again, you don't have to agree. But we can agree to disagree. It's healthy, honestly. You know, I think enough people have been cancelled. We don't need any more cancelled just for having opinions. And uh, the same thing goes with Meta, you know, Facebook. Their stock is now down 70% for the year. Uh, because go woke, go broke. You, you advertisers don't want to advertise on it anymore. What are its growth prospects? It, it's, it's a horrible product. Horrible product that stalks people, that sells their private information. Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, he really is a scumbag. He really is a scumbag. I don't know why anybody trusts him. I don't use Facebook much at all. Just for this channel. That's it. I don't follow anyone on Facebook. I don't look at Facebook other than my channel on it. Because it's the easiest way, one of the easiest ways to talk to people outside of just having YouTube. Is to talk to the people who are commenting, the subscribers and followers on Facebook. The rain has picked up. I hope you're hearing that. Oh, I'm ranting. You know what? It's really good when I rant. <laughs> I feel better. <laughs> Probably because I'm having a drink. Hey, Brucey, you back. He is here. He's walking around in front of the camera. Mm. This whiskey is beautiful. It's Thompson New Zealand whiskey. It's very nice. Very nice. Hey, Brucey. How are you doing? Um, YouTube. We hit 140,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you to all subscribers. Thank you. Much appreciated. Um, when my darling dad said to me I should do this when he was dying, who knew? Who knew the channel would be this big? Amazing. I think we we're almost 40 million. Have we got 40 million now? 40 million views, I think. Yeah, I think so. And 140,000 subscribers when this video comes out, which is um, towards the end of October 2022. And I, I'm just staggered. I honestly didn't expect it. So thank you to all subscribers. Thanks to everyone who stuck around. Thank you to everyone who watches for such a long time. Uh, you're all so loyal and you're so fantastic. And um, we gain some, we lose some. Some people don't like it when I say things or have an opinion or change things or have sponsors or whatever. And I get a pretty hostile message saying, no, I don't like this anymore, I'm subscribing. Because people get angry. They don't like change. But mainly it's because some people want it to be just about what they want, what they found at that time. I view that as entitlement. I think it's more healthy to say, you know what? This isn't just for me, it's for a whole broad audience. And half of you out there, half on my channel are from retirement age. And a large percentage also are 24, 18 to 24. So go figure. And um, that's why the view time, the average view time of this channel is one hour now. It, it's huge. So I just want to thank you all. Honestly, you're fantastic. You really are. And now getting on to um, media and shows and things like that. I was listening to an audio book, just finished it, by Richard E. Grant, who was the star of a cult movie back in, was it the 80s or 90s? 90s? Called With Nail and I. It was a cult movie. It's my, one of my favorite movies of all time. I know, word for word. Anyway, he's written a book. Uh, Pocketfuls of... Pocket... Pocket... A pocket full of happiness. Yeah. 
basically uh, during COVID, his wife of 38 years uh, was diagnosed with uh, cancer. Is it lymphoma? I can't remember. Bruce, you've got to calm down. As Taylor Swift says, you got to calm down. Come and calm down here. Come on, calm down for a minute. Lie down. Lie down. It's okay. I, well, you won't do it, will you? He's got a lie just under the light, out of view, playing with the shadows. Can you see any of him at all? You might be able to just see his tail. He will not calm down. Not with the lights on. Yeah, so a pocket full of happiness. Oh, man. So, catalogues the story of his wife being diagnosed with cancer right through to her death. Stories from their past and his past and when he was in Star Wars and other big you know, movies that he, he's had a chance to be in and going to the Oscars and things like that. But mainly it's about him losing his wife of 38 years who, and they were so close. And I'll be honest, I had a weep at the end. Wow. Just thinking about it. Just thinking about what would happen if I lost Anne. Um, if she got a horrible disease like cancer or something. I'd be devastated. It'd be ah, oh. and I had a bit. I had a bit of a weep at the end. I have to say, it was so, so sad. And Anne and I are both listening to it. Very sad, but it's a great audio book. It really is, and it tells you a lot about love, perseverance, joy, and living life. It really does. Can you see Bruce walking back and forth in front of me? Because of the lights, there's that light there, that light there. So he's he's swapping shadows. <laughs> Brucey, what are you doing? When it's dark enough, I'll put his light on. Yep. So there's that pocket full of happiness, and I uh, it's a great book. So I I got it on audio audio audible audio book, and um, yeah, it's fantastic. So I thoroughly recommend that. Oh, and the last one was uh, Gangs of London, which I first saw in the UK, but this is season two. Oh, I loved it. Really good. Really gripping. Very violent. Quite gory. But I, I'm assuming, I mean, it's Gangs of London. These are real gangs that they're talking about, so it would be that violent and that gory. I don't know what you can watch it on. I think it's on Sky in the UK. Um, here in New Zealand, it's on Neon. I'm not sure if you can get it in the States, what it would be on. But Gangs of London, it's very good. Definitely got to watch the first season. Um, but I thoroughly recommend it. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Uh, and then that just leaves me with the huge news. So I wonder how many of you commented what you think the huge news is. And I wonder how many of you got it right. So let me see. This video will come out. So I'm bringing this video out a week early. I uh, usually I do one video every two weeks, but I've had some time to do this one as well. So this is a week after my last one, which was a car camp. And then the one after this will be another wild camp, I think. So yeah, so this video will come out before the actual news gets published. So who can guess what the news is? I'll give you all time to write a comment. What you think this news could be. Any ideas? Okay, well maybe some of you got it right, I don't know. So the big news is, drum roll. I'm dragging this out, aren't I? Sorry. We are getting a puppy. And this is gonna be Bruce's brother. And he looks identical to Bruce. 
and he's now just coming up to three months old. And I'm gonna go and pick him up next week. Third, yeah, late next week I'm picking him up. I'm not gonna tell you his name. You'll have to guess what you think his name might be, but he is a purebred Border Collie from a great lineage. He honestly looks exactly the same as Bruce did as a puppy. Very symmetrical look, uh, absolute cutie. He's just gorgeous. And so what's gonna happen is, there's a few reasons for this. Uh, firstly, um, Anne needs some company when she's at home by herself when I'm out camping and I, I go out a lot. So it would be nice for her to have. Bruce needs some company. Um, we do have to go away. We've got to go and take Brandon to do the university circuit and stuff like that um, next year. So we'll be gone for a month. Um, so Bruce has to go and stay with these kennels that he knows. But I, uh, I'd like him to have company for that long. He's never stayed for more than maybe, I don't know, a couple of days. Uh, but I'd like him to have some company. So um, it's, you know, he's going to be with this puppy. We'll be older then, five months, I guess, six months. And they'll be like brothers. Hopefully they'll get on really, really well. And it will, it will be great for Bruce. It'll be great for Bruce. Uh, Bruce is getting older. Sorry to say it. And everybody loves him, I know. But he's 11 years old now. And I'm not sure how many more years he can do these sorts of trips. Yeah, sure, the easy camping, no problem. But these tops trips can be quite challenging, especially in winter, especially in snow. And so I'd say that Bruce can probably go another two years, one to two years safely. I'm not gonna push him once he gets older. Um, so I want him to help train up another pup and then we can swap over and then I can take pup camping and Bruce will stay at home with mum which I'm sure he'll be quite happy about as well but it's a lot easier to train a puppy when you've got another dog to help do that because they learn from the other dog so siblings you know it's easier So, I guess four days. So when am I releasing this video? What day is it today? Saturday. Brucey, Bruce, stop, stop, come on, stop it. Stop pouncing. He's pouncing at the shadows. Um, Saturday today, I guess I'm gonna release this video maybe Sunday night, New Zealand time, maybe Monday. Um, I guess then I'm picking up the puppy on Thursday and I'm going to document it. I'm going to vlog it. I'm going to video it all. Uh, Bruce and I will go and pick him up and I will video all of that and put out another video uh, when I pick him up, which will probably be next Friday or Saturday. So gosh, you're going to get three videos. Obviously picking him up is going to be a much, much shorter than normal video. It won't be the same lengthy three hour video, <laughs> clearly, but you will get to see it all. And then you'll get to see uh, hear his name. Um, but in the meantime, can people guess what his name is? But we have named him already. Um, so it's not so much a competition to guess uh, uh, to name him, but who can guess what his name is going to be? It's a tricky one. I can't wait to see the comments. Honestly, I'm quite excited to see the comments to see what you all think Bruce, uh, Bruce's brother's name is going to be. And we've said the name a lot to Bruce now, so he gets used to the name. Oh, I've got to turn the camera so you can see him. He's doing his very neurotic shadow watching, and he's right under the light. Let me just move this around just slightly. Okay, can you see him? I've got a cable blocking everything, but he, he's just there. I'm sure you can see him. Yeah, so what do you think, everybody? What do you think his name's going to be? <laughs> mm. Right, so 
I want to end it with an observation. The wind is howling and I can't feel it at all. It's coming over the top of the tarp, around the tent, and I can't feel it. The tent is acting as a wind block and the tarp is low enough at the back and high enough at the front that I've, I've got a beautiful view out the front of the the, the trees. Well, pretty much what you see behind me, all those trees, I can see here, but there are mountains in the background here. It's just the camera won't pick those up because the trees are blocking them. Look at him. Bruce. This is what Border Collies do. They love pouncing on shadows. Um, I'm just in love with this camp. It's great. I'm super warm. This jacket is super warm. I love these hand warmer pockets. Just everything. This camp. Oh, I'm so happy. And not having to have a fire. A fire would be lovely, but everything is drenched. Really drenched. And also, the slim pickings for firewood in this forest. As you know, I struggle to get firewood in these tops areas because it's so healthy. There's just hardly anything dead. It really is hardly anything dead at all. Um, <laughs> it's just such a healthy forest because the air here is so clear. There's no acid rain. There's no dying off of the beach, which is what this is. So unless a massive storm rips through and knocks over a whole load of trees, there really isn't any choice. Not much to choose from at all. So it's nice to be able to be up here, be warm without having to have a fire because fires come with smoke and smoke is a nightmare, it really is. And it's just so difficult to avoid the smoke. Right, everybody. <laughs> I've left you with a lot to ponder, um, but mainly the puppy. You've probably forgotten now absolutely everything I talked about and now just totally focused on the puppy. Uh, right, I'm going to chill out. I'm going to have the rest of the cigar. I'm going to have the rest of that whiskey. Another hot chocolate. I might watch a bit more of a movie. And then I'll bring you back for bedtime when I have to dry him off. Oh, and he's a mess. Bruce, come here. Why are you such a mess? Why are you so soaked? Because you're playing out in the rain, aren't you? Good boy. And just like that, he's gone. All right, everybody, thanks for coming. And I'll bring you back at bedtime.
Chris.
Welcome back everybody. Bedtime. He is absolutely soaked. I've dried him off as much as I can. He's got his towel on. He's been out playing. And it is chucking down. It really is chucking down. Oh. But we're dry. I've been bone dry under the tarp. But the wind is howling out there. And when I was sitting out in front of the tent, I couldn't feel it at all. He's so wet. There's no way I can completely dry him. The towel is drenched. Listen to this. It did say heavy rain. But it's like storm conditions out there now. Uh, it's grim. It's really grim out there. I could have stayed out there. I, I, did, I wasn't feeling any of it, to be honest, but I'm tired. I wanted to go to bed. I wanted to get my sleeping bag and just chill out, crash. I'm so tired. Uh, he's going to... Oh, he's, he's just soaked. It's awful, it really is. Um, I don't know, this is gonna be a rough night. I might have to put earplugs in tonight. I've got the camera just outside of the door, but I will be closing the inner door, but I'm gonna keep the outer, the fly open because we're completely covered by the tarp. There's, there's no rain is gonna get in here. Um, there's water on the inside. He got, he came in, and he and he shook a little bit. <laughs> Nightmare. Oh dear, it is grim. These are grim conditions. You would not want to be setting up camp right now in the middle of the night in these conditions. Awful, freezing cold. It's now what five degrees centigrade. But I've got airflow through this mesh door here, and this will be closed, and this is mesh. I'm hoping there's no condensation in here tomorrow. Usually, with a soaking wet dog, you'd be drenched with condensation. In the morning, I bet you he is completely dry. His bed will be wet on the underside. But his body heat, plus having this blanket on, this down blanket, completely covering him. He's gonna be super warm, he'll dry off. He's preening now. He'll do that for, he might do that for an hour. It takes him a long time. He was fine coming in. I mean, he doesn't always want to come in, but he has to, eventually. You can't just stay out there all night. Gotta come in. So once I turn the camera off and we go to bed, I will just cover him up completely. Pull this over, cover him up, it'll be fine. Let me bring you a bit closer. You're outside the tent at the moment. You can get to see, really see him preening away. <laughs> oh, what a night. But again, it wasn't a big deal. I was dry and there was no wind getting to me sitting in the front of the tent. The tent was act acting as a wind block, so was the tarp. It was completely dry. So it just shows you can do it. You can go out and if the conditions change, you can have a good setup. You just gotta be prepared. And if you wanna go out in the rain because you love the sound of the rain or it's a weekend, and it's the only chance you get because you've got to work, then you can do it, no problem. You just got to have the right gear, the right setup. It is blowing out there really hard. I mean, the tarp is secured. It's locked in place. So fingers crossed, no pooling, nothing like that. Uh, no leaking. <laughs> I doubt it will because this tent is super waterproof and it's under the tarp. So we'll be fine. 
the, the floor is a thick floor, plus I've got a ground sheet on, on it as well, just to protect it. So we'll be fine. I'm on a really thick pad, the Thermarest Xtherm. Um, I'm gonna be warm. And I've got my 20 Fahrenheit, whatever that is, minus six degrees centigrade quilt. I'm gonna zip this up, snuggle up, got my pillow, my big, big king, Nemo, king philo pillow. I'm gonna be fine. This should be all good. Have you finished preening? He'll do it again. As soon as the lights are out, you can hear him. He carries on. He's just looking out the door now, thinking, I could be out there playing. Dad, you're so mean. But it is bedtime. Isn't it, Brucey? Bruce. Hey, Brucey. Are you sulking because you want to go out? You want a stroke? Brucey. Bruce. <laughs> he's, he's like, I'm right here. Just stroke me. Oh, he wants to be outside in the rain. He's just playing out there, pouncing in this heaving rain. It doesn't bother him. And even though it's five degrees, it just doesn't affect him at all. He was just having so much fun. He's gonna sleep really well. He's exhausted, really. I'm exhausted. That was a long day. That was a hard trip up here. Great food, great cigar, great whiskey. Good chatting to you guys. All right, everybody, unless something major happens in the middle of the night, and as usual, I hope not, we will see you in the morning for a coffee and breakfast. Won't we, Bruce? All right, night, everybody. See you in the morning. Good night, Brucey. Oh, he's so wet. Ugh. All right, good night, everybody. See you in the morning. Their brain is really heavy. It's coming in bursts, but it's loud. Thank God for earplugs. Oh, Oop. don't lose them. <laughs> We've got them here. So he's snug. He's asleep. No, oh, no, not now. Because I've just lifted this up. It's, I guess it's only half an hour after we've gone to bed. I was just drifting off, but then it got really loud. And that's one problem in a tent, is heavy rain. Well, I mean, another problem in a tent is you hear everything. You hear every single thing. But you need earplugs, trust me. It makes a big difference, earplugs. So I'm gonna put mine in. I'm settling in for night. There's no leaking, there's nothing happening. It's all calm. The wind isn't that bad. The, the tarp can cope with it anyway. All right, everyone. Hopefully nothing else. Hopefully this rain calms down. <laughs> it's heavy. It keeps getting heavier. See you in the morning. Night, everybody. See? Morning. Oh, morning. Thank you for my kisses. Morning. Morning, everybody. Morning, Bruce. Oh. Lie down. No, no, no. Come on. Morning. Morning. Oh, you're dry. Yes. Dry dog. Lovely. Dry, dry Bruce is lovely. Morning. Did you have a nice sleep? He turned around under the under his blanket. Morning, everybody. Well, sun is shining. It looks like a beautiful morning. It rained most of the night. It even rained up until about an hour and a bit ago. Stop crying. Why are you crying? Is it because you're excited? Is it because you're excited? I need to let him out. Let me let him out first. Oh, hang on. Oh. Carnage is about to happen. Let's 
going on out there? Wait, go on then. Oh. Yeah, it looks beautiful. I've got a misty lens. Hang on. Is that better? Not really. Anyway. <laughs> oh. It's sunny. It was a cold night. Definitely got close to zero. Ooh, sorry. But I was warm in my sleeping bag. Oh, I was very comfy, I have to say. Very comfy. It's the most comfortable I've been in a tent for a long time. Mm, right. I need to get up. Have a coffee. Oh, it's so calm out there. I can't wait to show it to you. And the sun's shining. Perfect morning. Okay. Bring you back for coffees. Right. Got all my gear on. It's colder. I think colder. Oh, it's four degrees. Four degrees centigrade. Let's go to the time bridge to get some more water. Come on. Oh. It will soon warm up in this sun, though. Just I don't know how long it will take for the sun to hit me. Where we are. Oh yes. Oh that's nice. Oh. Oh yeah. That is very nice. Okay. Let's get this water. Bruce has been going nuts. Look how pretty it is with the sun. see the mountain. There's nowhere I would rather be. Than up here right now. It is just so beautiful. And that sun is stunning. Oh, it's just so warming. All my gear would dry really quickly if I had it out here. So when you camp out in the open, not in the trees, there are big advantages. Lots of disadvantages, but big advantage. So, uh, Bruce is gone. He's already semi gone in the tarn but if you're camping right up there on the tops which i've done before then your gear dries so much quicker and it's just much easier in the sun but it'll be windy up there it's full of beans full of energy he's going up there i don't know why he's where he's going where are you going bruce I'm not going up there. Right. Let me get this water. Bruce, are you gonna come and get oh god, he's gonna jump in. Right. Nope. Look at him go. Okay. Ah. Oh. Where are you going, Brucey? Come on. You want some breakfast? Oh. <laughs> All right, let's go back to camp. Let's get breakfast. Coffee and breakfast. You wouldn't believe he's 11 years old, would you? He's still such a puppy. Okay, bring him back for coffees.
You know, I think the first thing I need to do, first thing I need to do is lift, yeah, lift tarp because I've got it on this low setting from last night because it was windy. So let's raise the tarp. There you go, as easy as that. And the tarp is now raised. Ah, oh, excellent. Okay, we need to get the kettle on. And then Bruce is gonna want his breakfast. He's gone charging off into the shadows over there. As he does, but as soon as he hears me talk about breakfast he'll be here so you see I've still got plenty of fuel left and this little container is eight ounces so what is that 200 mil 230 mil it was full to the brim there's still loads left Lighter, it's cold. Now, when alcohol, when this stuff is cold in the morning like this, it takes a while to get it cranking. There we go. Right, Bruce, do you want your breakfast? Oh, he must be a long way off. Bruce, join your breakfast. Here he comes. You having fun? Are you having lots of fun? Sit. Good boy. Just wait a minute. Licking his lips. He's very happy. Just wait. Hang on. Need the good stuff to go with that. Hang on, Brucey. Let me put the good stuff in. So excited. So happy. I'll give you another double pack because we've got the long walk out of here. the salmon one don't you yeah this is all organic salmon with vegetables kumara you know sweet potato all cooked in New Zealand someone thought I was giving him dry food you can see it's not dry okay. another one of those weird comments I mean, look, you can see it's not dry. It's completely wet food. All right, there you go, Brucey.
What a perfect morning. It's gonna warm up pretty quickly. I love camping like this. When it buckets down with rain or cold, horrible the night before, and then you know that the morning, well, the forecast was the morning was gonna be nice. And for a change, they delivered, they got it right. Right. Bring you all back for coffee. Okay, kettle is boiling. Flame off. Oh boy, do I need this. Oh, I'm having another hazelnut latte. I don't know, they're pretty good, they're not bad. From Avalanche. And it's hot, okay. So what did I think of camp? It was awesome. Absolutely loved this one. Hey, you know what I might do is I've hung my clothes out to dry. I might put my backpack out to dry as well. Yeah, backpack is pretty wet. It should dry very quickly in the sun. Umbrella for the camera. Let's get that drying. The sun here is so intense. Let's get my poncho out. Yeah, the poncho is very useful. The covering pack. Great. My clothes are all steaming. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. I mean, I could sit out here and have my coffee. But I think I will. Let me go and get my coffee as well. That noise you can hear is the sound of the bellbird. This one's sitting just up here, talking to Bruce. Wow, once you're in the sun, oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's so warm in the sun. That's another thing you have to think about with your campsites. Yeah, the bell, but he might come and say hello. It's flitting around camp. It's got the most beautiful song. Yeah, when you're thinking about camp location, just check where the sun's gonna rise because as much as it's nice to sit there with a nice sunset, it's actually sunrise you really wanna get on camp. Dries everything out, it's nice in the morning. So just make sure you're, you're angled, I'd say to the east, you know, east, northeast, if you can, or east, southeast, if you're in the northern hemisphere. And it would just make a big difference. Honestly, it does make a big difference. Because now I'm absolutely cooking. And it is spring, so the sun here, it's really intense. I think New Zealand has, <laughs> this bellbird. Uh, I think New Zealand has the highest rate of skin cancer in the world per capita. 
just because the sun is so intense. Hey, Brucey, look, I'm over here. You came looking for me. <laughs> hey, what you do, Bruce, what are you doing? He's mad. It looks like a Chinese laundry here, with all my stuff all over the place. The steam rising off of all of it. It won't fully dry it out, but just better to put it in the pack like that. And if my shorts dry out, then I'll put those on. That's the key bit. Oh, he's here now. That bellbird has flitted right next to me. Come on, it doesn't get any better than this. I've got an entire mountain to myself with me and Bruce. I've got coffee, I've got great food, I'm warm, dry, sun's out, bellbirds. What's not to love? This recharges you. It's beautiful, I love it. People ask me if I like camping in the rain. I love camping in the rain. I love the sound, but I love it when this is what comes next morning. Made it all worthwhile, it's like a reward for sticking it out. So you grit through it, you, put, you, you do the hard work, you climb a mountain, you rough it through grim weather, show it can be done, and this is your reward. Yeah, it's worth it, definitely. I love it. And Bruce loves it as well, don't you Bruce? Where have you gone? Hey, Bruce, come here, come here, Bruce, Bruce, come here, come here, have you found a stick? Are you going to find a stick? Don't find a stick. Have a look around, see if you can find a stick over here, Bruce. No? No, you'd rather play in the shadows. All right, I'll bring you back for breakfast, everyone. I'll probably do breakfast out here as well. I'll bring the Tranger out here. We'll just stay out here now, because why not? I mean, I could bring the tarp and the tent out. I could just bring it all out here and put it in the sun. And just think, this is the spot. I'm sitting in the same spot where it's usually like three feet of snow. And you've seen me camping in the snow up the top, so those last couple of snow videos. That was just behind me there, this spot. I think this is my favorite spot. But... Hey, you got a stick! <laughs> Good boy. I'm gonna pull that apart. Yeah, this is my favorite spot. It never gets old, it doesn't. I just love it. All right, I'll bring you all back for breakfast. It's a scene of carnage here. So I've taken the tarp down, taken all of Bruce's bedding out, which is all soaked. So basically all that's left now is my tent and my bedding. That's it. But if we go out here, where I'm boiling the water and having another kettle, it's like Chinese laundry. I've got everything laid out. Drying, steaming, don't know if you can see the steam coming off my shirt. Probably not. Bruce's towel, just everything. Even the ground is steaming. And my kettle is steaming. Okay, so my kettle is boiled.
Yeah, these avalanche hazelnut lattes, not bad. So this is why even my camera is getting a good drying out. But Bruce's bedding was drenched. The underside of it, his, his sleeping pad was really wet but it will dry out really quickly. The intensity of this sun, I mean, look out, you can see how wet that is there. That will start steaming in no time. So that's the handy thing about the tussocks, these tall grasses, it's just drying everything out, makes it so much easier. And this is why, especially after a rainy camp, you want to have prepared, if you know it's going to be sunny, you want to prepare to be facing the sunshine. Find a nice sunny spot for the morning. Perfect. Welcome back everybody. It's quite a bit later. So I've just gone to get my breakfast, which was gonna be bacon. I was gonna make a bacon bap and <laughs> I've forgotten the bacon. I've left it in the, the cool bag in the car. I was in a bit of a rush when I was packing after I got out of the supermarket and I don't know, I just forgot it. So it's a good job I've still got another beef schnitzel left. So what I'll do is I'll have the rest of my beef schnitzel and I'm gonna have that in the bap, the bread bun that I've got. <laughs> it's always something. I always screw up something. It's quite normal. Cause I'm always in a rush, I'm always in a hurry. I was in our local town. We had to stay at the local town last night because um, it was Brandon's, my son's, leaving dinner at school. It was his last year. So I wasn't fully prepared. I had to take everything with me and pack it all at the hotel, which was a bit of a nightmare. So inevitably, I got flustered and screwed up and left something behind, which was the bacon. Hey ho. But that's okay, because schnitzel will do. And I've got the bread bun, I just haven't got the bacon for it. <laughs> it's, I, I've been sitting here just chilling. Honestly, it's, ah, uh, I could easily stay for another night. I could. It's so nice. But I need to get home. And I need to edit and upload this video. <laughs> and I haven't got any more food after this. So it's a good job I left this, as I said, and had, a, had one more just as a backup, because it turns out this is my breakfast. Oh, it's always something. Now I know the experts out there will tell me I've got to make a list, blah, blah, blah. It wouldn't have helped, honestly. I was just, it was just one of those things where I was just flustered, that's all. And I think I've squidged my bap. I've got squidgy bap. Yeah, I've crushed it a little bit. I wonder if that will pop up in the sun. It might, you never know. <laughs> oh, so I was really looking forward to my bacon sandwich this morning. Oh, I was, I was, I just couldn't be bothered to do pancakes. <laughs> oh well. All right, let's chop this thing up. I don't think I'll be adding any more garlic butter to this one. Not for breakfast. If I was French, then maybe. This will actually work out well. This will go well in the back. Oh, someone's come back now, you can smell some food. He sort of, he sort of, he sort of flits by occasionally, but then once the food comes out, he seems to loiter. So all over here, I've got everything spread out, the tarp, all the bedding, all of my, 
clothes, everything is drying nicely. Um, it won't be perfectly dry, but it will be better than it was. Because it just weighs more when it's wet. And you don't want to pack it all up and then have to get all that soaking wet gear out when you get home. So I'm in no particular hurry to get back. So I'm just gonna let it dry out as much as possible because I'd rather wear my shorts and stuff to go home, to walk back down. It's two and a half, two and a half hours back to the, the truck. I don't wanna walk in these, I'll, I'll cook. So it gives me time to get that all dried out. Oh God, yep. Five second rule. Because I'm trying not to cut myself. Okay, this will work out just fine. <sighs> Honestly, I can't tell you just how, but you see, it's still cold. I just checked the thermometer. In the shade, it's still just below 10 degrees, so like nine degrees centigrade, single digit. You can see my breath. But in the sun, it's scorching, really is. Now I should bring the tent out and let that dry as well. It's, it's just not that, it's just, I don't think the tent is that wet. So as I said last night, the beauty of schnitzel is it's really thin, cooks really quickly. Thinner cuts of meat when you're camping, you can because it just doesn't take as long to cook. And if you get sausage meat, then just mash it all up into pat thin patties, it would taste the same, where sausages take ages, or you can cut the sausages in half, as I've learnt. But this takes no time. And beef, medium rare, that's all you need. It's cooking nicely. There's still remnants of the butter in there as well. So it's soaking all that up. Perfect, absolutely perfect. You know what, I think that's actually done. I'm gonna let that sit for a sec, and then make my bun. It's ready. And here comes Bruce, as predicted. And he can't have any of this because it's been cooked in the garlic. Bruce, no, 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 no. It's been cooked in the garlic. Plus, he's had a massive breakfast. Triple Decker. This is gonna go down well. Beef schnitzel, butty. Mmm, wow. That was way better than I expected. In fact, I think that's better than having bacon. Mmm. Yeah, that's come out really well. Who would have known? Beef schnitzel. For breakfast. Okay, I'm gonna finish this up. I'll bring you back for packing everything up. Which I might just do everything out here in the sun.
letting the tent dry. Nothing left in there except Bruce's bowl now. Bruce, naughty. He's so cheeky. Did you see that? Went for the pan. <laughs> oh, Brucey. Oh, yeah, I know. Very cheeky. Very cheeky. Oh, I've got stuff spread out everywhere now. Okay, I'm gonna have this coffee, bring you back when I'm packing it all away. Okay, welcome back everybody. Right, time to pack up. So I'm just gonna shove everything in the backpack. I don't need to put it in, in their individual packs. Shove it all in and it'll be good because I've gotta take it all out when I get home anyway. Bruce has been having a fantastic time. We've just been sitting here chilling out. It's been great. Best pillow ever. The Nemo Philo. Great pillow. King Philo, I think it's called, or something like that. Something like that. Now, the advantage of just shoving everything in like this is it fills all the voids. All the nooks and crannies in the bottom of the pack. Whereas if you stick compressed bags in, you end up with voids. Just, it just makes it harder to really maximize the use, the space inside your pack. So this backpack, the MFH, I think it's MFH 110 litre pack. It's good, but it's got some niggles. Uh, their quality control is awful. There's three minor things I've found wrong with it. The strap has already come off its stitching. It was rubbish stitching. It wasn't centered. It's not centered in the middle of the pack. There's a, quite a few needle holes. I don't know. I don't know who is checking these things, but they're not checking them well enough, that's for sure. I mean, quality control is, is pretty much everything. You can have the best manufacturing process that there ever has been, but without decent quality control, how do you know a few bad products don't get through? So that's why I like the Hilberg tents. They all have the name of the person that made them and checked them. So if there's a faulty product and you report it, it goes back, they know the exact person that made it. So there's accountability. Because the last thing companies want is to be sending, you know, receiving stuff back. So I've yet to find a pack 
that's built to the same standards as my Tatonka Bison 90 plus 10. That's still the best pack there is. Oh man, it's it's so hot in that tent. So my gear pretty much dried out. Considering how wet it was. That's pretty cool. Just makes the pack that bit lighter as well. Now the poncho that I got, this, I think it's the same brand actually, MFH. Yeah, that's pretty good. That did a great job. with alcohol burners. There is a seal on the lid, but I don't trust it. And it has failed on me before. So I always wrap it in a Ziploc bag. And now you can get plant-based Ziploc bags. Which is a nice touch. Transit did me proud again. Oh, my pack is going to be so much lighter. Yeah, the thing I like about this pack is it's got these massive side pockets, which just fit all my camera gear perfectly. You can put all your food in there. And they are big and they actually detach and become together a mini backpack all by themselves as well. Okay.
That was nice to have, my table. Nice luxury. It's nice and light, doesn't take up much room. I can't remember what it's called. I climb. I don't know. Some generic Chinese table. Now I should have put this in first. Because <laughs> now I've got rid of all the void space. I can't squeeze it in. chair will go on top. <sighs> My camera umbrella. So if you are filming, for your own, I don't know, your own interests. <laughs> and you're gonna be going out in the rain. Yeah, get an umbrella. For your camera. Toilet paper in a waterproof bag. First aid kit, out pouch, snack, GoPro for filming on the road, walking. This is the GoPro uh, 11. Latest one. I used to film with the iPhone, but as I said, it's doesn't have stabilization. Even the latest one, which I've got 14 Pro Max, it's just no good. Very wobbly picture. People ask me about this chair all the time uh, because it is so good for the back because it's long. They've stopped making it. So you just have to search Amazon or AliExpress and see if you can find something similar that's lightweight. Um, but I can't even put the link to where I got this from because it's gone. And I got this on Amazon and when you click on the link it's now completely gone. So I can't even get the specs for it anymore. I guess the company went bust or something. But it is a really good chair. It's a bit bulky as you can see, but it is light. But most importantly, it really supports my back. So guess what? It, we are now, comp we, we've gone from scorching hot, not a cloud in the sky, to completely covered in cloud and looking like it's going to rain. That's not good. We don't want rain.
but it is the tops. Okay, I think everything I need to get in here is in here. Okay. Yeah, I should have put the chair in first. I don't know why I didn't. But it's okay, I've got tons of room. Okay, I've also got to start up my EPUB. Get it cranking. So this is my Garmin InReach Mini. Let me show you that. I don't know if it'll get focus. Um, but this is uh, a portable beacon. And it needs a while to, to connect to the satellites. But I can text from this, all sorts. So I'm just gonna clip that to the top there the best place for it to get signal. Okay. And then my camera, main camera and everything will go in the top of the pack. Right, let's get the tent put away. Wow, it has really gone overcast. I think it's gonna chuck down. Well. In case you're wondering where Bruce is, he was behind the tent. I don't know if you can see him down there in the tussock, just hiding. It's all curled up. I think he's worn himself out all morning playing. Now, the other good thing about Hilberg are their bags are oversized stuff sacks. So you can get your tarp in no problem as well. Just easier, easier to load up. So as usual, I'm not gonna fold it. I'm just gonna stuff it in and then deal with it when I get home. I get a lot of requests to show you what I do when I get home, how I clean gear, how I dry it. Honestly, I just, <laughs> that's not my thing. I don't really want to do videos on that. There are plenty of other videos out there. I'd recommend um, Luke at the Outdoor Gear Review. I'm sure he's been through how you care for tents, what you do. I'm sure he's got lots of videos on the subject. Yeah, everything's bone dry now. It's worth waiting around just to try and dry your gear off. 
if you can. See what I mean about oversized stuff sacks? And that is it. That didn't take long at all. I mean, if anyone wants to uh, rewind that and film it and tell me how long it took, I'd be interested. <laughs> but it didn't take long. So when I clip this on, one thing I always do is I also put the strap through the bag cord just so if it does come undone, it'll just flap around instead of falling on the ground and me not noticing and losing it. Excuse the arse shot. All right, that's it. Bruce, you ready to go home? You ready to go home? Can you see him now? <laughs> okay, let me get the uh, tripod big camera packed up and I'll bring you back for the walk out. And uh, get on the GoPro. So I'll bring you back in a second. Right. We're all packed up, campsite's clear, pack fully loaded, Bruce raring to go. Come on, Bruce, let's go home. Yeah, everything done. Let's just go back and double check the actual campsite. Come on, Brucey, let's go in here. That looks pretty clear. All my loops, because I counted them, six, six cords. No rubbish, no sign, no trace. Bruce, shall we go home? Come on then, come on. Right, we're on the way. So it's about oh, two and a half hours downhill. It's a couple of bit uphill bits. I tell you, the temperature has plummeted. That's so strange. The, but as I always say, it's the tops. When you're on tops of mountains, anything can happen. You've got to be prepared. Um, if it does rain, I'm just going to get wet. I don't care. Because I'm not pulling my poncho and everything out to put that on when I've got stuff in the car. So this is gonna be a bit of a slog because you're using a whole set of different muscles going downhill. And it really, really burns your hamstrings. And some of it is really steep. And given the amount of rain we had last night and how slushy it is, it's gonna be quite slippery. Okay, let's get cracking.
somewhere up there is a kia, which is a New Zealand mountain parrot. They're endangered and it's, Bruce is going ballistic because it's making its sound. I think it's actually freaking out about Bruce. Oh, there it goes. Just flew off in there. I don't know if the GoPro picked that up. Just flew off Bruce. But yeah, that was triggering Bruce quite a bit. It's all right. Come on, let's go. Look at Brucey, he had to go and lie in the puddle. Were you hot? Yeah? You better now. Come on then, let's go. Go on. Oh, he's brown. Oh no. That was a murky little brook here, little stream. Gonna have to let him run through the river to wash him off. His legs, he's lost all of his white on his legs. Let me show them. Brucey, come here, let me look. Look at the state of you. You're very pleased with yourself, aren't you? Bruce? Brucey? Hey, Bruce! Oh, he's distracted. Come on then, let's go home. There's a big flash flood caused all of that. Never used to be there. Now there's a full-time stream. And this is what flash flood damage looks like. It's just a mountain of trees and boulders. A right mess. I wouldn't have wanted to be here when this was going on. It's just torn a hole right through it. Go on up, Bruce. So what happened was there was a natural reservoir that had been dammed up years and years ago. Could have been there, oh, could have been there 20, 30 years. Go, Bruce, go on. And um, we had a cataclysmic uh, storm event. 
Anyway, it must have overwhelmed the dam, whatever the dam was made of. And the whole lot came crashing down in seconds. Just millions of liters of water. And just devastated a path through the forest in the space of a minute, I guess. As you can see. And it just destroyed everything. This wasn't here before. There was no stream here whatsoever, nothing. All these boulders came from way up high. So it all came crashing down. Pretty spectacular. Isn't it Bruce? Come on then, let's cross. But just the scale of the devastation, the camera doesn't do it justice. Want some water? You gonna lie down in the water? Look, there's a little pool here, you can come and cool down. You gonna lie down? There you go. Nice. Oh. Is that cooling? Look, it's washed all that mud off you. You're gonna lie down, wash more mud off. Come on, lie down. All right, you had enough. You're almost clean. Almost clean. Just lie down again, Bruce. Let's just clean you. Oh no, not gonna do it. Nope, it's not going to. Anyway, yeah, that's the devastation. Okay, there's the track marker up there, not far to the car now. Just amazing. All right, come on, Bruce. <sighs> yeah, I'm glad I wasn't around for that. One day, I'll have to send a drone up there and find out where the reservoir was. The dam. Bruce is hurting me. <laughs> when I talk, when I'm walking, he goes slower and he comes back behind me to push me along a bit to tell me to hurry up. Go on, Brucey. <laughs> so he's behind me. Don't think you can, don't think you can make him out. Right, push on. Oh, and we're out of the push onto the stream bed. I camp quite a bit further up there usually by the stream. It's my normal spot, which I love as well. Don't I, Brucey? Come on. Oh, I don't fancy going back into the to the bush, but I don't really want to do any river crossings. Bruce doesn't mind the river crossings, but they get pretty boring after a while. So I think we're gonna go up into the bush and Bruce should show us the way. He knows the way. 
We're going up, Bruce. And there he goes. Oh, back up into it. It's very, very humid in the forest. I mean, it is a rainforest. But it is, oh, it's 100%. It's warm. I'd say it's about 17, 18 degrees centigrade. <sighs> Woo. Just sweat like crazy the second you come in here. But the rain held off, which is good. We're almost there. The road is just on the other side of this fence. Oh. Bruce used to jump over these as a pup. <laughs> Not anymore. Now I have to carry him over. You gonna go up? Up, up. Yeah, so lazy now. And you just can't be bothered anymore, can you? Right, let me deal with Bruce. Oh, now it's onto the road. Bruce. Over the side. Well, that was a great, great trip. I hope you enjoyed that. We did. I loved it. It was a great camp. And it just showed that even in grim weather, you can have a great time. Just have got, got to have the good gear, the right gear, the right mentality. Some experience helps. You'll always make mistakes. I try and keep the mistakes in. <laughs> like forgetting my bacon and stuff like that. Uh, but it doesn't have to be as difficult as you think. But it was fun and I hope you enjoyed it. I can see the car just in the distance. So we'll get there. Uh, say my goodbyes, we'll say our goodbyes to you. And also, I wanted just to add something about the puppy that uh, I think you'll like. So, join you in a minute. Oh, my feet are tired. Be nice to sit down. Whew. Back at the truck. Brucey. We're going to say our goodbyes. Back at the beast. Aren't we? Oh, the beast. Just had new brakes fitted because they weren't very good. If you know anything about Rangers, they got drum brakes at the back, but now we've got these lovely shiny disc brakes in there. It means the stopping power is pretty great. Oh, it's filthy. Well, I've got to get all this gear off. Brucey, stay there. Stay there. We're going to say goodbye. Good boy. Okay, everyone, thanks very much for joining us. Um, we've had a great time. Bruce had a great time. Thank you for everyone that's bought us treats, coffees on Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube members, subscribers, and everyone who's bought merch like this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to everybody. And what I wanted to say was regarding Bruce's new brother that I'm picking up next Thursday is whoever guesses the name first in the comments, I'll pin that comment forever. 
All right, everybody. Thanks very much. Good luck guessing what, it, what the uh, puppy's name is. And we'll catch you next time on AB Camping. Bye, Bruce. Bye, everybody.